so far our project allows us to randomly choose the graphic and the associated name and the associated um, title. What I want to do next is make the text below the graphic an active link. I want to be able to click on Facebook and go to the address in the URL uh, property of the particular object. So here we're going to do some more of this um, relatively simple but syntactically complex code here. This is basically image source equals whatever and you know a href equals whatever but syntactically it's complex because of all of this having to open and break uh, the uh, the plain string to add dynamic data and so forth. So we're going to do something similar to that to make the name an active link. In my case line 34 that's where I've got show the description as the title attribute of the image then break. Okay, so at the end of that line of break in the quotes, I want to start my A tag. Something is going to be an active link, an anchor, so A tag. I want the A tag to start and end after displaying the name on screen. So the ending A tag will be where the, where the ending div tag is. The start A tag, display the name, end A tag. So here as div ends, so does a tag end. You should probably highlight the notepad to show that it's that it saw its pair. Just like if you've got the div tag, it saw that way back there, and you had the starting div. But anyway, here we've got a slash a. A obviously needs the href attribute. Um, so we will add inside of the a tag here, space href equals single quotes. You hopefully see where this is going. We're going to need to break that double quotes plus double quotes again. So just to make sure it's all there. You've got your a tag starting with your href. You're ending a tag at the end after name. And then so here, quote space plus space quote this is where I'm going to put my dynamic uh, address. So I'm going to break that into the next line, like I've kind of been doing before. So href, end of the string, concatenation, continuing the string. Next line here. And then before I forget, plus right there. Is something dynamic is going to happen there, plus the rest. Well, the dynamic part is response object dot social the currently random soch index dot url space and don't forget the plus. So this is going to open URL. Now, I this is going to go off to an external link. So we should set target blank. We should set it so that our clicking on the link opens in a new window. So that's the attribute target onto the A tag. So here we've got the start of the double quotes for the end of the angle bracket tag, the single quote which ends href attribute we need a new attribute. So at that point, space that. And this one is totally simple. Target equals single quotes. We're not going to need to do anything dynamic there. It's just a plain old underscore blank, which um, creates a, a brand new uh, window for this social network link to be displayed in. Colorization got a little weird there, but you're seeing that attribute uh, that attribute is, is part of the A tag. Starting A tag, it's angle bracket target single quotes or else I would break my string. 
Let's see where else. Save it and run it, and you should see that your you should see that your um, name of the network is an underlined active link. Click on it, and it should open in its own tab. Okay, so I'll reload that random network underscore uh, underlined under YouTube. Click that new window. We get the YouTube videos. Randomize that to something else. Tumblr. Click on that. Loads up on Tumblr. You see a lot of cute animated graphics there. And it opened up to that network. Randomize again. Got Google Plus. Click on that. It opens up to another network. Randomize. Go check out Vine. You turn your volume down because Vine is all about video. So we've got the different uh, networks opening up once you click. That was that there. So let's pause there to make sure it works for everyone and then we'll do a little bit more, but that's where it is so far. Anyone need a little help on that? So we've got all of the pieces of data that we stored in the JSON file. We're using them in HTML via JavaScript. Um, if we think of a brand new field, we would go back to our JSON file, add a new key and value pair. We'd have to add it to all of our networks. We've got nine at the moment. What if we had 90? That'd be a little bit of effort there. So again, we get back to what we talked about last week. What We have to figure out how are we storing our data? What's our schema? What's our way of uh, storing this information for later retrieval and usage? I got a great idea. I should add a brand new item here called, uh, I don't know, user count. How many people currently use that network? So I'd have to go in and add a brand new use. Don't do this, but I'd have to add user account. And then I'd put in a number. I could put in a real number there. Um, I'd have to then add that to all my networks, and then I can use it on all my networks. I won't, but that's what I'd need to do. And then I'd have a new field, user count. I'd have um, response object. <coughs> dot social dot user count and I have that data there. The the displaying then is uh, because of that placeholder we are showing the, the data on screen. Um, via JavaScript what I also want to do is style it a little not really not really styling it via JavaScript but helping to style it with CSS through JavaScript. I think that div is a little too close to the button. It would be nice also if, um, for example, like the word SoundCloud, I'd like it aligned up a little bit. Um, it's very evident there on Vine. I'd like to line up the word Vine and the icon Vine. I'd like to line that up nicely. So CSS. Is, is used for that. I'm going to write a little CSS, then we're going to apply the CSS via JavaScript to that element. There's a couple ways to do it, and we'll do this way about using JavaScript to apply the CSS. So first, let's back up to line 6 inside of our head block. We'll write a little quick um, embedded CSS. So we need the style block up in your head section, up in your head block. And write some job, uh, some CSS here. So be a class. So we started off with a dot. We'll call this div center. This will be some CSS to center the contents. Div. Um, the syntax here, oh, curly braces. So um, dot, 
because it's a class probably braces. Because then this now, that we've had more experience in JSON, now we're sort of seeing that then this is sort of in JSON format. We have a key and a value pair. Just to start off with, we'll do background-color. We don't put uh, quotes. Um, notice we have the semicolon, so not exactly the same JSON syntax. I don't want to confuse the two, of course, but I'm just seeing traces of it. They're distant cousins. So background color red. We'll start off that way so far. I want to apply the red color to the background of that div. And obviously a very quick way is to simply attach class right there in the HTML. But I want to do it dynamically. I want to be able to apply that class to that div as a result of showing it on screen. Or in other cases, I'm going to click a button to make something changed via a class. So to, to that div, I'm going to apply div center. Just confirm that you've got your, your class written. Go back down to the code, line uh, 43. Line 43, I've, uh, I've got my ldiv show object. I've changed the property of inner HTML to what's ever in the string, all that stuff there. Next line. We're talking about the same element, so L div show, a particular object. This time we've got dot um, class name. We're setting a we're setting a, a class name to that element equal to quotes semicolon div center. We're saying let's use the um, div center class. We're adding that to L div show. Save it and run it. And uh, click the button. You get a background color, red. I put something very, very obvious as a big red color just to confirm that clicking does give a uh, background color there. So if you've got a, a big red background color, okay, it's a matter now of starting to, um, we're starting to um, refine our, our CSS. So um, I'll go back to my CSS. I, I see that red is appearing. What I want is a width property and a value of, uh, let's do 75 pixels. Check the result. So now it's not as big as before, only taking up a little bit of space. Okay, within this box, I'd like to, the picture is, and the text is right next to the very left edge of that box of 75 pixels. I want a little breathing room. So we have padding, a little bit of padding so that I'm inside of the box a bit. So another property here, padding, to, uh, Let's try 1M. Just like that. So one unit of space around the four sides of the box. The 
if you recall from a long time ago, our box model in CSS is that we've got the four sides of this container. By using one value here, we've applied 1m to all four sides. If I do instead 1m space 2m space uh, 0.25m and 4m, I'm going to put different amounts of padding on each side of the box. One at the top, two at the right, one quarter at the bottom, four at the left. All off center and such. But here then I've marked the four sides of the box. I'm going to keep it as 1m, equally all four sides, but if you want something interesting you can put it, uh, different values for all four sides. That's simply uh, a space in between, no, no commas. I'll keep it as 1m, however. And next what I want to do here is uh, text-align center. I, I don't normally type the, um, the colon that way. You see it still works. I usually type the property colon and then space, but I'll just type it that way because that's how we were typing the, the JSON data. Uh, white space doesn't matter there. You could keep it close like that. I usually type it that way simply because that's how I got used to writing it. So now we've got that box. It's a little um, inner padding. Now the text and the graphics are lined up inside of itself. That red color there was just for show. You can remove it or put a different color if you want. If you do leave a color, you can do something fun like um, the uh, border radius 1m. this there. And I think that button is, I mean that little element then is too um, close up to my button, so that would be margin. Text is getting a little hard to read, so I have to write more CSS and then attach it. Um, maybe I can put a background color just behind the text. further refine this if I wanted to, just something here. out other details later. So what I did here then is uh, created another rule in the CSS class space A. So I'm saying any A tags inside of that class, just changing background color to white.
bit further, I uh, need to do a little bit of testing to get something perfect. But at this point, uh, I don't know if that's okay. So background color just to behind the A tag and a little padding there. <coughs> So we have our social network randomizer based on our JSON file. We're opening, opening that up and we're opening up the file, we're parsing the data, and we're and we're displaying it on screen. Okay, so all of this that we've done today has been to take from a JSON file and display on screen. Well, you might think about, what about the opposite? I want to have like some sort of input form and save that to my JSON file. If I've got this JSON file, networks.json, um, what if I've got a brand new social network? You know, what if I provide Snapchat with a description and text and all of that? So the opposite would be that I'm taking input and I'm saving to the JSON file. That, with our current level of knowledge, is a little bit out of our grasp, actually. The code that we have here so far in our knowledge is to retrieve data from some resource and then process it and display it on screen. The opposite of to save to a JSON file, that's actually a lot more complicated, unfortunately. We're, we're not going to quite do it, but I'll point you to the directions if you're interested. Because we have, uh, if you do a search for uh, HTML5 file API, you can see plenty of articles out here about this. But the HTML5 file API is a way, is a more uh, powerful way also to load uh, files like graphics and all of that. To write the data again, it's more complexity because it's going to, if you think about it this way, we have an HTML file that is trying to connect to a JSON file to write data to it. And it's super easy here, like in Windows, where I just, you know, right-click edit and I'm editing it. Behind the scenes, a lot of stuff is going on. Now imagine that this file was on a server and then this index, the JSON file was on a server, an index file was in my app trying to connect to it. We, have, we then have a host <laughs> of problems to deal with because we have these security issues. Is my app trying to write data onto the server in an insecure way, in the wrong way? Are we accidentally writing this data outside of the scope of the file into a different part of the server? Are we writing the proper type of data? This right now is a plain old text file. Is the HTML file and JavaScript set up to write plain old text into a JSON file? Is the file system going to accept the type of data that I'm going to try to save onto the JSON file? So I see it as a plain old text file, but internally it's encoded in a certain way and I have to write the proper code in JavaScript to connect and write the, the data. So we're not going to do it together about the opposite. How do I save data to a JSON file? We're not going to do that. Uh, but what we are going to do then is uh, with this knowledge segue into starting to use the database 
the more powerful database because JSON is useful and powerful, but at our current level of knowledge, it's not going to quite do what we want to do for our app. For our app, we want to mostly focus on saving data and retrieving data. This way at the moment is pretty much a one-way street. We're loading data uh, from some resource to actually save the data. We're going to get to that. So um, I think what I'll do is at the moment uh, end the main lecture and I'll put my files in the network folder if people want them. And then I'll mention a couple of things to prepare us to for Thursday where we're going to get into much deeper into the um, the advanced database that I want to work with. So any general questions on what we did today before I change topics a bit? Why Chrome then want to work with JSON? Chrome's security policy is very strict. And so if I try to run this in Chrome, I just want to see the current error that it gives us. Um, as, I, as I try to open it, it's going to say here, that this um, cross-origin requests are only supported for protocol schemes, HTTP. It's saying, if you're trying to open this data, you should be opening it via the HTTP protocol, or the data, or HTTPS. Right now, we're trying to open file protocol. So if I'm trying to open JSON off of my server, it <coughs> should let me. It's just going to complain that, why are you trying to open a local file from a web page? So it's way too strict. If we run this off of a server, it should uh, let us work because it's, now losing, it's no longer using the unsupported protocol. It's just extra security that they're trying to help us with, but it's hindering us, and that's why temporarily we're in Chrome, I mean in Firefox. But what we've done here does work properly on Chrome if it's on a server. I believe we do have, if you fully want to play with that, we do have the WAMP server server software. So if you run that and put your files in there, it might run, but that's out of our scope at the moment. Any of the general questions? Okay, so we're going to end the main lecture at this point. I'll put my files in the folder and upload the videos.